Welcome to what we like to call What's Up Doc, where we spend some time with the great folks at Mercy Health and learn a few things. And uh, this morning, we're going to learn a little bit about uh, pediatric surgery, a medical specialty that requires expert and delicate care and an expert in that field. And joining us here this morning is Dr. Iswan Holterman, pediatric surgeon at Mercy Health. Dr. Holterman, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm great. Tell us a little bit about you. About me. How about okay. you? Okay. Well, um, I guess I'm a first-generation immigrant uh, from um, Vietnam, and but I've done all of my uh, uh, university and, and postgraduate training in the United States. Um, I my entire professional life, pretty much academia, meaning that I um, I teach, um, I do research, advanced knowledge with scientific and clinical research and publication. And then I serve the university program building, but most importantly, you know, I, I take care of patients and, and um, you know, university, we, we highly value excellence in patient care. And then, then I retired um, from the university about three years ago so I can spend more time uh, with, um, with global surgery and we can talk about that later. Uh, but I'm currently um, am the, on staff at uh, Mercy Health as a pediatric surgeon. Well, uh, at what point in your, uh, uh, your medical uh, uh, beginning did you decide to, to go into pediatrics? Okay, so, you know, pediatric surgeons are surgeons. They're not pediatricians. We, uh, we train as surgeons. Um, and it's a long, I kind of have a winding road in that I, um, I finish. So for pediatric surgeon, you finish uh, medical school four years and then uh, anywhere between five and seven years of general surgery. And my husband actually uh, is also a pediatric surgeon and he fi finished training and I kind of took um, maternity leave for about four years and I saw how much fun he was having. So then <laughs> that's when I decided to apply for pediatric surgery. Um, so that was kind of a delayed, uh, and so that was like four years after I finished general surgery that I decided, okay, I wanted to, to take care of, of, uh, of, of babies and children and, and operate, um, on them. Oh, now other, now obviously things are, are, are smaller with, with, with children. What are some of the other major differences in, in, in what you do as far as pediatric surgery and, and, uh, I guess adult surgery? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so uh, first, we consider ourselves true, true general surgery because we do just about everything except we don't touch the brain, uh, the heart, the spine, and and the and the bone. And we take care of um, of children anywhere as tiny as um, less than a pound that are very, very small because they're premature, like they're born at 23 weeks. You know, your term baby usually are, are born at 37 weeks, and these are babies that are born at 23 weeks that we, we operate on. As, as, uh, as high up uh, uh, to 15 or 18 years of age that sometimes we have to operate because they have some medical issue, including obesity, they can be as, as small as, um, as one pound to 300 pounds. So it's very, very wide, and 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 we consider ourselves just general surgeon. Now, many of us go into pediatric surgery because we love to uh, to take care of babies and and repair congenital malformations uh, of the heart, uh, head and neck, of the lung, of the gastrointestinal tract, um, and then some uh, hernias of the abdominal wall in in babies. Uh, but beyond babies, when you get into like less than five years of age, the majority of what we do um, are either emergencies like appendicitis um, uh, or mostly elective like hernia and then some tumor behind, be benign tumor or, um, or cancerous tumor of the skin, of the lung, just pretty much the, you know, most of the organ system other than the one that I mentioned to you. And then when they get to the beyond five years of age, and we, we start seeing also gynecological uh, uh, issue like like girls with ovarian problems, and we do a lot of gallbladder 
uh, I know general surgeons are, are known to, to do a lot of cholecystectomy and appendicitis, so that's where we overlap. Um, and then we'll also take care of trauma, like kids who are involved in, in a car accident. You, uh, you mentioned hernias uh, two or three times uh, in, in your explanation there. As uh, I'm rather ignorant on them. I always uh, thought that was uh, something that affected uh, your older population a little bit more. How common are, are hernias in, in young children? Yes, the hernias that you see in, in younger population, in the, the, the patient population that we see, um, they're, they're different. That The groin hernia in, 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 in the children population is different in adult, in that the adult we consider that acquired. You have some weakness in in the wall of the the muscle in the abdomen, and you have the bulge. Whereas these babies and these children are born with it. You know, it's part of the normal uh, developmental process. And for for various reasons, um, there's still a communication uh, from inside the abdomen to the outside. So in boys, like it goes into the groin, and same with the girl. So so. It's, so we we do fix quite a bit of them, and what we do is we just um, we close that communication rather than in adult where you have to reinforce uh, the uh, abdominal wall uh, to to help uh, repair that um, uh, the hernia. Is a, is a hernia in something something that 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 young and small is that is that noticed right away by by a physician, or is that something a a, a parent would notice uh, along the way of development? Uh, it's variable. Sometimes parents just notice a bulge, and the hernia can be like in belly button. It could be in you know up and down the middle part of the abdomen, but most of the time it's um, it's in a groin. So the parents can just notice it and bring it to the pediatrician, or the pediatrician or or the healthcare provider can just notice on routine exam. Uh, that's the majority of the time where they're being picked up. But then sometimes they they show up in the emergency room because. Because as I mentioned to you, there's a communication from the inside of the abdomen to the outside, and that communication is a, is a route for intestine to make its way uh, outside the abdomen, and the intestine get caught uh, in the groin, and that becomes an emergency. So we really have to 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 make sure that to push the intestine in, and then urgently close that communication, so they don't get into the complication of losing the intestine from that complication. A hernia treatment always require surgery? Almost always. If, if you have a groin hernia, you need to have it repaired because otherwise you put your child at risk for this complication that I mentioned. And um, hopefully most of the time you can push it in and urgent repair, but other times you can get the blood supply interrupted the intestine and you lose intestine and become you know, a, a major issue with as far as post-op recovery, post-op care. The majority of your s performed surgeries, are they done under full anesthesia? I know that's, a, that's kind of a uh, nebulous area for adults. Uh, right. is, is, is there a concern about putting young people under like that? Yes, it's an excellent question. You know, about 20 years ago, we're not so aware of uh, the potential effect of, of general anesthesia on brain development. And then some studies start to come out, mostly in animals. And now we're starting to do some of the, some of the study in, in children. And the data in, in human is not, is not clear cut. But I personally try to do it in, under what I call regional anesthesia, meaning that we don't intubate the patient, we don't give them general anesthesia, especially very tiny babies, uh, j just to avoid general anesthesia. Um, not only because I don't like to have them intubated, most of them have lung, chronic lung disease and they don't recover very well in young babies, um, but also because of the, uh, the possible potential of, of brain development. But really, you know, if, um, if the baby needs the surgery and, and you can't do regional anesthesia, you, 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 the, the anesthesia is actually very, very safe. We see in, uh, in your bio, doctor, that you're uh, very interested in global health. Tell us a little bit about that. As I mentioned, and I retired about three years ago so I can spend more time uh, with global health. Um, and, and by global health, most people uh, will understand it as uh, uh, providing care in, um, outside the United States uh, in country with low resources, uh, in poor country. 
so, for instance, um, I go. I spend a lot of time in Vietnam, um, but I also spend a little bit of time, for instance, in Pakistan. And and um, in those countries, my practice changed a little bit in that I do less direct surgery, uh, but I do more teaching. Uh, teaching uh, the, those um, those surgeons how to take care of the patient. Uh, they, they are very good technical surgeons, but, uh, but they're very, because of the, because the, the, the circumstance of their training, uh, they don't have as much exposure how to manage the patient. So I spend a lot of time doing that, and as well as build uh, the capacity of, uh, of the program and build research uh, program, um, because I believe in, um, you, know, get, you know, teaching a man how to fish rather than Rather than give them a fish, because a lot of the a lot of the effort uh, being done in global surgery is you you come in as a big team and you operate on the bunch a lot of patients and then you leave. Uh, that's a different approach that I have, but um, it's just one of those things when when you started and you start make building relationship with with the colleagues overseas, it just become addicting because you can you realize how much more of an impact that you have. Um, before we let you go here, uh, anything that you would uh, advise to parents that maybe don't know about some, some health concerns that, that you see on a regular basis that maybe could be prevented before it gets to you? Well, you know, I, I usually deal with them when, when they have, when they have the, a surgical issue. So it's, it's more of um, for pediatrician. Um, but one thing I would say is that, um, y- you know, um, United States is, is a high-income country um, compared to, for instance, Vietnam. When I come to, but in 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 certain part of the our countries, um, there are some similarities in 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 terms of access to care. There's some some um, some disparity in that. You know, ninety-five percent of the surgery can be done locally for your child um, if you have a pediatric surgeon here uh, in this area. And, and if you don't have a pediatric surgeon here, then it's a real burden for the family to have to travel uh, to Chicago or to Wisconsin, um, uh, whereas, you know, the, the minority of, of the case, they, they need to travel that far. Uh, those are for very, very complex diseases that need a multi-specialty uh, team, very sophisticated team. So, so I, I, I think that the, the family, you know, we here, we're accessible. You know, if you have any question, we always, um, you know, we can hear what, you know, if you'd like us to see you. Uh, but in terms of prevention, um, not a whole lot in, in surgery. You know, the only thing perhaps is that take good care of your child. Um, you know, the obesity is a, a real problem and, and uh, catch it early because, we don't want to get to the point where they're so obese that they need, you know, bariatric surgery. That's the last thing we want to to to, to see happen to to our children. Dr. Aswan Holderman, we really appreciate you taking time out of your day. You are a, a fascinating person with a wonderful background, and we know how busy you are. So thanks for carving time out of your day for us. We really enjoyed the conversation. Well, thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, she's Dr. Aswan Holderman, pediatric surgeon at Mercy Health.